Hello. I look kind of disheveled, but that's just my hair, so I don't really know what to do about that. Um, anyways, in this video, I buy a lot of books, I get rid of a lot of books, and then I talk about the books that I bought. So it's like half book haul, half on haul, and then half TBR, which that's three halves. You're getting like one and a half videos in this. So I hope you enjoy listening to me talk and maybe like some of the books and pick them up for yourself. Okay, bye. So I went out today with the intention of just buying clothes, which I did. There is the thrift store and I went right next to the thrift store. There was a secondhand bookshop and I was like, let me just take a look real quick. I've been watching a bunch of booktube videos lately and just getting a bunch of like recommendations on like authors or like different types of books, like more nonfiction, memoirists and uh, just poetry. And I'm really excited because a lot of the stuff on my list I managed to find and they were so cheap. So I'm really happy about it. Took a lot of self-control not to spend more because uh, some of the books that I want to read are like parts of series and they had multiple in there. It just feels kind of weird to like buy stuff in bulk because what if I don't even like the first one and then I just own like the next ones in the series? Although it is kind of hard to be like, no, I don't need it when it's only $6. Like we might as well just get the second one, you know, while we're here. But um, I didn't self-control, self-control as I buy eight books on impulse. So really excited. I will show off what I own now later when I get home. Boy. Hello again. Home, but I'm in a rush. So this is going to be kind of chaotic. Uh, I have been buying a ton of books, which super cool, but my shelves already full. And I also was like, I've been needing to like unhaul some books that I'm never gonna read again. Would be better off with somebody else. So I'm gonna take this time to just take all of the books I don't want and go back to that secondhand store and sell them back. So here's the new collection and this is all the stuff I bought. I've never owned a pair of jeans before on my own. So that's kind of huge. Then just some cool pants, like a long ass dress and then like a vinyl green skirt. I don't know, it feels nice anyways my shelves are already full they're fully stocked and i need to get rid of like all of that basically because i'm never going to revisit that so many stephen kings and like this like just shit that i don't really care about anyways it will all go in there i'm not going to film it because i am in kind of a rush but that'd be cooler if i could snap it damn we did that two layers of books. It's probably gonna be really heavy, but okay, time to go. Alright, buckle up. Okay, mission accomplished. I sold all the books except for three of them. One of them because it was just like really shitty condition and they were like, hey, we don't want this. And then the other one for just like the first volume of Attack on Titan and Pokemon Adventures because I just wanted to have them. I just don't want need to wear that. I just didn't want like all 14 volumes that I have. It was just like, it's unpractical. Uh, anyways, I made decent money. I wasn't really like expecting like make bank or anything, but I made like 70 bucks, which that's pretty good. Like I will take that because if you think about it, the $60 that I spent on books earlier, it's kind of like all those books were free. And yes, I do get that that's not how that works, but for free. And we're back with slightly emptier shelves, basically. This one, like only half, but this like entire top one is all gone. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put the rest of them up probably, maybe. 
Who really knows? Hello again. It's tomorrow. Or today, I guess, depending on how you look at it. But I'm here, on the floor, um, because that's where my books are. And have been for I don't know how long, because shelves have been full. So I've had like a floor pile era. And so while I'm down here organizing my books, I thought I would finally tell you what I bought, because for some reason I haven't done that yet. Disclaimer. I don't super know that much about some of the books I bought. I either bought them because I'm interested in reading the author or because they're a recommendation from someone I watch. So if at some point I'm talking about a book and you're like, they don't know what they're talking about, I don't. Anyways, uh, let me tell you about what I got. So starting off, we have two books by Mary Carr, parts of like a memoir trilogy by her. Uh, so I have Liar's Club and then I have Cherry. Liar's Club is about early life, like her childhood, is what I understand at least. So this focuses on like girlhood and kind of understanding the world as it plays out. And I've heard good things about this, especially like the narration style, like the voice that she takes on while writing this, because she captures kind of that like sense of childlike wonder and like whimsy really well without being overly infantilized. And that was enough to sell me. I've been meaning to read more memoirs, so I was just like, I'm not gonna like overthink it. Uh, I wanna read it, I'm interested, let me pick it up. And then I ended up getting Cherry just because it sounded too good. And if I was getting Liar's Club, I was definitely getting this. So Cherry is the next in the series. And instead of following girlhood, it follows the kind of teenage years of Mary Carr as she explores the transition from girlhood to womanhood and that weird liminal space in between where you are just figuring a lot of stuff out. I am very much interested in this. This seems right up my alley. Not that I read memoirs, but if I were to read one, which I want to, uh, this one has caught my attention. So I want to read this, but it's the second, so I have to read Liar's Club first, and we'll do that. I'm excited to read Mary Carr. Next is Pilgrim at Tinker Creek by Annie Dillard. This is a another nonfiction, and it kind of is like a litmus test for me to see if I can enjoy stuff that isn't just like directly an essay or a memoir because nonfiction has never really been my thing. Um, so I'm excited to see if I enjoyed this, which I think there's a good chance I will, although this is like an American novel. And in my head, I just kind of associate that with like classic literature that follows like isolation and wilderness, like Call of the Wild, which is not really my thing. So kind of hesitant, like I have reservations, but at the same time, through a woman's perspective with a background in poetry, I could see like a focus on nature and the natural world being really, really well written and interesting to read. So there's hope for us yet. She's an American writer from the 70s and has a lot of other stuff. I also wanted to read like a memoir that she's written about writing. There's a lot. This is what they had. I'm happy to have it and I'm happy to kind of challenge myself. Even though I don't think this is gonna be like hard to read. This is just kind of out of my comfort zone. So we'll see. Next on the list is Outline by Rachel Cusk. I am late to the Cusk party, but happy to be here even if I am kind of fashionably late. I really wanna read Second Place by her, like everyone. I've heard nothing but good things. It sounds super good, super interesting, and I really, 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 really wanna read it. Uh, they didn't have it there, but they did have Outline, which is another trilogy. This isn't a memoir, it's a novel, but it has, I don't know. I'm not gonna like pretend to like fully know what this is. I know that it's about like conversation and like dialogue and just kind of languid prose, um, whatever that means. I'm not an English major or well read. All I know is that Rachel Cusk is beloved and writes really well apparently. And I'm very much interested in just reading something by her. She also has like a memoir collection that I was looking at. So on the mind, I am excited to kind of engage with her stuff. Excited to find out what prose means. Uh, that's half joking. Um, Elena Ferrante, my brilliant friend. This is another, the Neapolitan novels, I think they're called. Which are a series of four books. I've heard also pretty good things about it. Um, even people who don't like love it still like it. So I'm like, it seems like a safe bet. I'm sure there's something redeeming there. Um, this book also follows early girlhood, like The Liar's Game, but focuses more on like friendship through women, like uh, female friendship through the lens of childhood, I'm pretty sure. It's like, I don't know if like the story is like generational. I don't know anything really, uh, aside from like the premise of female friendship, girlhood, written well, Eleanor Ferrante. I mean, I'm there. What else do I really need to know before I'm like, yeah, I'll read it. Excited 
to read this because if I like it, there's three more books and they all sound interesting. So fingers crossed. Also the spine is super cute and the way that they look together, adorable. Speaking of books with kind of sequential spines, Autumn by Ali Smith, part of the Seasonal Quartet, another kind of quadrilogy. I don't know what those are called. Anyway, oh, quartets, that's what they're called. I just said it out loud. This is a book that is also about nature, I assume, or kind of just very temporal. I will not claim to super know what this is about because I was kind of turned off at the way that these books look. I don't know if it's just the covers or something, but they give me like 2014 to 15 Tumblr vibes, like not the 2012 era, beyond that when things became like about like minimalism and like very like aesthetic anyways so yeah the cover just kind of turns me off for some reason i don't know what's going on there but regardless uh, i've heard good things about the seasonal quartet and it just kind of made sense i've been hearing a lot about ali smith in general and it seemed like a good place to start also it's like about to be august so things are about to become like autumnal again and reading about autumn in autumn just kind of do you, do you get the connection? Hopefully by the time that I am able to get around to it, it is like fully, fully autumn and I can like feel some type of way. I've never really been like festive, but we'll see. Maybe this book will bring something out of me. Two more books. One more memoir. Joan Didion's The Year of Magical Thinking. Yeah, I mean, kind of self-explanatory. I have been meaning to get into Joan Didion. She sounds like a very interesting person. She was like a writer, a journalist in the 60s and wrote a lot of uh, essay collections, which I haven't engaged with yet, but I want to at some point. I'm just kind of like in like a memoir phase before I get into like reading essays because that is a little bit of a jump going from like literary fiction to essays, um, not there yet. So Joan Didion seems kind of divisive, not in terms of like liking her or not, because so far everyone that I've like heard talk about her has liked her, but like to varying degrees, basically. Whether you're nonplussed and you think that she's kind of too removed or like impersonal as a writer that she kind of brings herself out of the forefront or that she writes amazingly and like her prose is like, you know, buzzword, buzzword. I've heard great things just in varying degrees and I'm excited to see because the kind of complaint that she's impersonal doesn't seem valid on this one because this is a memoir and not an essay collection and it's about some pretty personal stuff. This is about a time in her life where her daughter was hospitalized and then during that she lost her husband and deals with that somehow. Shout out to her. I cannot imagine. Reading this is going to be super heavy and I assume transformative in some way or just deeply moving, profound, revelatory. Um, maybe I'm overhyping it, but I've just heard really great things. So excited to have it, excited to read it, and excited to engage with Joan Didion further. Also, the copy I got is a hardcover and I don't really love that because book jackets are the devil incarnate. Anyways, aside from that fact, I'm excited to read it. So the last book is Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. I really wanted to read Housekeeping, was not able to find it. They had Gilead though, and it's another one that has been like on my radar. I've never engaged with anything by Robinson and the way that people describe reading her stuff makes it sound so profound, so like beautifully written, so like languid and like a celebration of so many different like aspects of life. I'm excited to read this. I don't know anything going into it aside from the fact that it's been on people's lists of things that they really enjoy. And also I think this is part of a series. I'm not really sure though. So that goes to show how little I know about what I'm getting into. Yeah, kind of just buying into the hype on this one, excited to form my own opinion. More books that I own now. I'm really excited about like this haul of books. I found like good stuff. They're all like books that I've had on a physical list. Uh, and all of these seem like really accessible to me as I kind of changed my reading habits into different genres and things that I haven't really been into historically. See what I think, see what I like, and maybe find like new genres to explore further because it's a lot of books. I'm sure I will like something in here at least. Getting them for like that discounted is super cool and also just like getting rid of stuff on my shelves that I have been needing to get rid of. Double cool. So I cannot wait to become so well read and intellectualized and critical and awesome. I will put them on my shelves and maybe show you or maybe the video is over. I don't know. If it is, goodbye.